So today I am in Denmark and I am in the northwest area of Denmark. It's an area called Blokhus and uh, I am here one week in the summer vacation. I've rented this uh, beautiful cozy house here. Uh, it's a very nice place to be. I'm really enjoying it. I brought a couple of guitars of course and uh, yeah it's nice. And uh, today I'm heading up to Aalborg, city of Aalborg, and I will visit a friend. He's a studio technician and a producer. His name is Jesper Möller. And uh, I thought that we could talk a bit about recording guitars, acoustic and electric guitars. Perhaps we'll see what the time allows. And it could be fun. So if you'd like to tag along for that chat, let's go. Roundabout, take the second exit. Okay, so I'm here with uh, Jesper, Jesper Möller. Nice to meet you again, yes. Jesper. So nice to uh, be here in Denmark. I was here, uh, I think it's four or five years ago. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Was yes. it in 2019, 2018, 2019? Something. Before the pandemic. Yes. And uh, I brought my friend, um, a bass player. His name is Bent. Hello, Bent. Hello, Bent. <laughs> That was so cool to be here with uh, some of your friends were here to join in the band. It was the drummer, what's his name again? Jakob. Jakob. Ulrich. Yeah, and we had this uh, organ player. Anders. Anders. Yeah. Weinrich Gregersen. Yeah. It was so nice to play with those guys. Uh, and uh, Jesper helped us out to get the sound right. Very cool. Denmark, in, uh, near Aalborg, you need to come here and check out his studio if you need to, uh, to do some recordings. But we are here today to talk a bit about, uh, I brought my um, vacation guitar, my acoustic uh, old Ibanez. It's a trust, uh, trusty guitar I've had for 30 years, but it's uh, fine to bring on vacations. So I thought we could talk about um, recording it, uh, how, how to best get a good acoustic sound. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm very I'm much into getting as close to the sound that I hear uh, mm -hmm. when I play um, into my recordings and that's not always the case mm -hmm. in my experience so I was hoping maybe to pick your brain a bit to, to what is the best approach well we can in general speak about how to get a, 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 a good guitar acoustic guitar sound for me it's like uh, where to start? Because it's about getting having a good chain yeah. in the like. You start with the converters, and you start with in the in the audio interface, and uh, you have to have a great audio interface, but also have a good microphone. Yeah. It's a uh, and then comes the room acoustics. There's so mm. many things to to consider when you want to have a a, a good uh, acoustic sound. Yeah. If you have those things in place. Then most of it comes up to the player. The, yes, the player, of course, the player, but also the mic placement, yeah. and but mostly the player because it's your fingers, it's your the dynamics that we're trying to to catch with a an old yeah, microphone. Yeah, yeah. So, sure. so uh, but a lot of it has to do with mic placing, mm. and, but also that you have a good chain of uh, stuff to record your guitar with. I see. W would you usually just go with one mic? Uh, for an acoustic or well it depends on the, the guitar is if i it, it depends on can i get can i catch the sound of the mic of the guitar with this one mm. then i can for many in many cases i'll i'll just uh, use one microphone but if 
if it's uh, if if I need, then I'll place a, a, a few more, or um, I can always uh, also use a DI direct injection yeah. to like uh, blend yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh, of uh, options. And then it would typically be from from the, that one that goes from the the internal microphone system in the guitar that, that you put into a DI. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then then just uh, blend the signal. Yeah. I see. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that's basically it. But uh, you need, yeah, you need good components to mm. get a good guitar sound. Yeah. This is an old AKG microphone. Huh? It's an uh, AKG C four hundred and fourteen. Yeah. Yes, it's an old one. It's uh, from the I guess it's from the eighties. Yeah. So it's just a uh, and a C four one four EB. Oh, yeah, so yeah. it's a, it doesn't have a metal a brass uh, capsule, but it has a, another type of cap capsule. I can't remember which type of it's plastic one, but it sounds very nice. Mm. It's a, I like to use this one for for acoustic guitar. Yeah. This one or maybe other like this. I have another EKG solid tube that I like to use because they both have some warmth to them. Mm -hmm. I really like the sound of them. So uh, yeah. Yes. All right. Maybe we should try and place it. Yeah, let's try and place it. Yeah. Should I just sit like yeah. this? Do yeah. do your thing. Yeah. Do the blues. <laughs> Maybe we could put it a little closer. Uh -huh. I guess I'm a bit uh, uh, on and off in my strength how I play. Yeah, it's, a, it's very dynamic, but it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I think it became a little too boxy, oh. so I'll just. So really small adjustments. It's and, the um, small adjustments oh. do, do is make a huge difference. But maybe pointed more towards the strings, not so much towards the sound hole. Mm. That's what I think I would prefer. Something to the extent of this. We're not. We don't wearing. We're not wearing headphones. No, right no. So we are trying to get it as best as possible uh, starting point before we start tweaking any EQs, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I guess. Well, I think uh, it needs to sound good before you. It, you can always EQ, but uh, it's it's a good idea to have something that you like to begin with. Yeah. Otherwise, I think you're you're tweaking something that should be of sounding course, sounding course. good already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's very marginal. How how. You need to find the sweet spot yes. really to to get the best of, out yes. of it. And so you need to test and try again yes. and, and listen in how it sounds. Exactly. Mm. Yes. Yeah. It's the it's the it's, you need to find the, the the correct place for this for your microphone before you start. Yeah. Because if you if you need to EQ to to make it sound right, then you then you haven't searched enough. I think. I see. Yeah, yes. that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. I think I, my approach would be rather faster to go with just a, a one point that I think it's good and then I would go into and listen in and say, oh, I need to tweak the EQs. So work more to find the sweet spot yes, before you I think so. start the recording. That would be my approach yeah, yeah, yeah. to it. It sounds, um, sounds very obvious. I think the main point is that if, if you feel you need something more to your sound, maybe because yeah. this might obviously has a character mm -hmm. 
and maybe you're looking for something else in yeah. the sound do you try different mics to find yes. it, which suits you or the other approach would be to just place a lot of microphones <laughs> yeah, but yeah. because then you have sound uh, you know if, yeah. if you don't know, if you're not exactly sure what you're doing then place a lot of microphones so you don't need sound then you can always say oh yeah this signal is maybe it's not that good yes. but i have this one and then you can yeah. if you're only doing one acoustic guitar then the guy if you have somebody who wants to mix it then he has something to choose from mm. but of course if you have a full band production that can be a little too much uh, experimenting of course it's also uh, this with finding the the sweet spot so it, yes. it could be troublesome to find a placement for the, the second or third mic now mm -hmm. so maybe you just need to do it one by one and yes. just test them yeah 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 i could play a little and see uh, yeah, how this it sounds <laughs> So, but so uh, a classic thing, I pointed the microphone somewhat to the 12th fret. Yeah. A classic thing would do when you record acoustic guitar would be because all the sound is coming from the sound hole. It, a classic thing would be to point the microphone at the sound hole. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Yeah, right. and, and what happens when you point the microphone at the sound hole is that you get a lot of boominess. Uh -huh, yeah. So you get a lot of um, bass. Yes, bass, bass and mids and and not so much uh, the other th frequencies and that and that uh, part of the sound can be incredibly hard to work with mm. because that then you instantly have to cut bass yeah. and then we you are at the place where you have to oh i need I, I just need to i'm not saying that the sound now is perfect because we just placed the microphone mm. but but if you place it very close to the sound hole then you'll get a lot of boominess and that is incredibly hard to eq because it's like I don't know if it's proximity effect, you know, where you get too much, too close and it's too bassy, but, but you get a, a lot of boominess and that's hard to EQ. Oh, that's my experience yeah, yeah, yeah. with guitars. Yeah. Should we try to do something else then? Uh, con yes. This, what do you call this? A condenser? This is a condenser microphone. Mm. And so it, uh, it gets uh, 48 volts. So uh, you have a, a simple way to say this. You don't have to work as much with the guitar to get sound from this, yeah. to move the coil. There's also dynamic microphones like a uh, Shaw SM57. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, dynamic, so you, to move the curl in the microphone, you have to like work a bit harder. And um, famous workhorse. It's a famous. <laughs> 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 you can put it in a glass of water, and yeah, it yeah. still works. So yeah. it's just an all-round microphone, and you can use. I've used it for vocal recordings for entire records, yeah. and there's nothing. It, it's you, you wouldn't notice. No. It's a great microphone yeah, yeah. for snares for everything. If you don't have the the correct uh, acoustics to record something like a guitar then you can use a microphone that's more like a, a 57 has a more narrow uh, Sound? yeah so when you record you won't you won't get uh, the sound of the room uh, this I one see. takes a lot of room sound but a 57 would would be only what's in front of yeah. it and then you could blend it with like a DI signal. Yeah. That would be a great way to get a, a cheap, uh, cheap and good uh, acoustic guitar sound. Yeah. Yeah. Should we try? Yes. Let's do that. Yeah. How are, how do you think about reverbs? Do you prefer to use the reverb that is in this uh, studio uh, room, or would you add? I would definitely add yeah. add some some reverb, but it it, it depends. 
what are you going for? Is it a singer songwriter? Mm. Then you have one approach, but I would always do some use some kind of reverb yeah. for the recordings. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We love reverb. Yeah. <laughs> Can't play without it. <laughs> so it's a bit dry in here. So I, I can sense that I, I struggle a bit with playing yeah. like I normally do because yes. this room is quite dry. Yeah, so it is a bit dry. Yeah, typically a studio. So that's one thing to be aware of. If you're going to uh, record in a studio alone or with the band, that you, you need to prepare what you're going to play. I haven't obviously done that today, but uh, uh, so many times I've come into a studio to record and I haven't been prepared enough. I thought I was, but once you get there, you get maybe a set of um, headset on, uh, and, and your band members are not where they usually are when you rehearse. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's, it's a strange environment and you're not in your comfort zone. Yes. Just be aware that you need really to know your stuff. Yeah. When you go into the studio to record. I have, I have various ways of preparing. I, I usually have a talk with people before they go to the studio and, and tell them that maybe the setup is different. Maybe they are recording with only their headphones so they can't feel their uh, amplifiers. Mm. So it's important to, to maybe do a dummy setup at home before you go to the studio so you know how does it feel to, to play with only sound in the headphones because yeah. it's a totally different experience. Some people get anxious before they go to the studio yeah. and I have I've, I've different methods of, of calming people down. Of course, speaking to them is one of them, but I would, I would uh, take a little stroll around the block, run mm. a little before you go to the studio, that will calm your nerves. Yeah. Maybe do a uh, breathing exercise, yes, meditation, yes. It's so you can be more present. Yeah. And it, because like you say, it's, it's very, very hard when you, you go to a, a place that you've paid money to be in, and uh, you've, uh, you, you, you're expressing your feelings and you're playing your instrument and you're totally out of your comfort zone. Mm. Uh, you need some something to calm you down or get you yeah, present. Yeah, yeah. I noticed just being here today that uh, my fingers wasn't doing what I was hoping for. So, so you need to warm up also. Just uh, just play some. Sit, sit and play for 15 to half an hour if, or if you need it. Just to warm up. Mm -hmm. It's it's quite important. It makes a difference. Mm -hmm. So you really need to, to prepare before you go to the studio. Mm. Know your songs, warm up your instrument, put on new strings on your guitar. Yeah, yeah. And, so. and play them a bit before you go to the studio <laughs> because they are quite metallic now. <laughs> Yeah, yes. well, mm -hmm. yeah, you have put up the SM57, yes. so... I'll go and listen. And okay, go yes. and listen, I'll try and play yes. something. So how did that uh, look in the control room? I had to uh, amplify the sound a bit more, yeah, but it, it's, uh, it sounds okay and it's, uh, you're getting there. Mm. You could blend it with the, the DI signal. Mm. Of course, uh, maybe not entirely new strings because they are like you said, a bit metallic, but you can blend the signal. Now you have two sources of, of yeah, sound. Yeah. There's a bit more bass here oh, present right oh, now, okay. and, and you can really hear the thump oh, when you play yeah, bump. Yeah. Mm. So I would probably, if it's a bit, it's a part of the song, I would, if it's not that much a part of the song, I would, I would move it a bit closer to the strings and not as much to the sound hole. But uh, if it's a part of your sound, then, then it sounds amazing and it sounds great now. Yeah, I see. And it's also good to be aware of that as a player, because then you can maybe relax that hard thump mm -hmm. a bit. But it sounds great, but it's depending on if it's for the song, then yeah, you would, yeah, then yeah, you would yeah, point yeah, it. I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. But that's good. Let's, uh, let's uh, record a little uh, snippet of this then.
<laughs> probably went through the roof. I think what to take out of it is to just try different approaches and don't just not settle with what you think is right. Just no. listen, you have to listen in for it. Maybe try different mics too. Mm. Because these, these guitars are also very different. Character of acoustic guitars varies from guitar to guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, even just changing the strings yesterday, I, I, I recognized that this is so much different than, than it was before I changed the strings. Mm -hmm. And the sound in this room makes it also sound yeah. very different. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that goes into the equation of uh, what makes a good sound. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I think to take away from this is just you need to really test out different mics and placements till you are on the sweet spot. Yeah. yeah. And, and like you said, you, different string gauges. If you like definition, then try lighter strings. Yeah. yeah. Because people are, sometimes use two heavy strings and you lose some definition, definitely. Oh. Also with uh, uh, electric guitars. Yeah, I've seen some tests on that on, uh, on the YouTube uh, lately, yeah. but I, I, I struggle with two light strings. Yeah. They seem so flimsy to me. I just yeah. Mm. No, we're strictly talking recording. Yeah, yeah. yeah I and uh, I've also my from my experience also when sometimes when you I have a, an acoustic duo I play with a guy yeah. play cover songs. Yeah. If we sit in in in, uh, in another room that I have and uh, what some of his guitars, if the strings are certain type of a certain gauge, mm -hmm. then some of the frequencies. Uh, cancel out, not cancel out. You can, of course, hear my voice, but it it, it can mean so uh, something in 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 just in a, in an acoustic setting as well. Yeah. Sometimes the right strings or the right uh, guitar can suit a voice, even if you're just playing Absolutely. together. Absolutely, mm. it's a bit time consuming to test out different kind of strings, so I'm a bit lazy. So I I, I found my kind of yeah. brand of strings that I normally use and and uh, just go with them mm -hmm. so but uh, of course there's a lot to gain from testing mm -hmm. these things out yeah i agree all right i think uh, i'm i'm very happy with what i've uh, learned today and uh, hopefully there is something in it for you watching uh, i um, will go home to uh, norway first i will go to blockhus in denmark and spend a couple more days there and uh, yeah it's so nice to be here I just love it in Denmark. So, uh, thanks for having me today, Jesper. Uh, this was a treat for me to meet up. Pleasure. Quite impulsive. I just uh, thought while I was here that why don't I call my friend uh, Jesper and see if he has uh, time to meet me. And what you know. So, I'm really happy for that. And if you are in Denmark and uh, in need of a studio or to record something, Jesper is your man. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. It's bye from Jesper. Yeah. And bye from who?